Hey, what's going on fam? Welcome back to the channel. Got another prepping video for you guys. Um, I am not behind my desk because I am out trying to fill a couple critical gaps that I found in our pantry. We're still in the process of sharing our pantry journey with you guys and this is a pretty important one. Now, what do I mean by gaps? I want to explain it to you by telling a story do you remember um golden girl sophia she would always say picture it sicily 1924 or something like that i'm gonna do one of those picture it a young soldier zagreb croatia 1997. so we had just flown from germany because we were heading down to bosnia herzegovina to support uh i4 and s4 don't worry about all that's not important well anyway we get off the plane I got my rucksack, my duffel bag, and I have my weapon, M16A2, assault rifle. The uh, platoon sergeants gather together, say, hey guys, we got to get on this bus. We got a five and a half hour ride into Bosnia, Herzegovina. The area between Zagreb and Bosnia was not secured yet. It's still it's technically a war zone, so we had to be on high alert. So he make sure everybody had their weapons, and then we started handing out ammo and that's when we noticed a critical gap in our readiness. They didn't bring magazines. We had no magazines for our rounds. So <laughs> I'm not trying to put down a unit or anything like that. I'm not trying to embarrass anybody. So I'm not going to say what unit I was assigned to. But the uh, platoon sergeant was pretty upset with the uh, supply sergeant. And so they started handing out rounds. We brought rounds. So they started handing out rounds in little Ziploc bags. And so I'm 20 something years old, 26. Uh, only been in the army for a few years. And now we're getting ready to head into a war zone, a technically a war zone with rounds in a Ziploc bag. Because we were not, we had gaps in our readiness, which was in this case, the magazines. So gaps are not necessarily things you're missing, but it's items that prevent you from using what you have. That's what I want to say. That's what gaps in your readiness are. So it's not like somebody said, oh, you got to have peanut butter or you got to have firewood or you got to have soups. Now, those are not gaps. Gaps are like you got candles, but no lighters. You have cases and cases of canned goods, but no can opener. That has happened to some people. We, we've all heard the horror story. Well, many of us have heard the horror stories of people having canned goods with no can opener because the only thing they had was an electric can opener, but the power was out. So canned goods, no can opener, candle, no lighters. They thought they had a lighter, but they haven't tested the lighter out, and the lighter been out of fluid for who knows how long or maybe you got like uh, the insulated that uh, reflective insulation I was telling you guys about in the last video but you got no tape you got no way of putting it up in the windows <laughs> so we always try to make do everybody's looking around the house for some tape uh, little Johnny got some uh, transparent tape and that holds it up for about 15 minutes or so sad Ooh, flashlights no batteries or dead batteries these are all gaps in your pantry i'm not gonna try to sit in here and tell you what you should have in your pantry or what you should not have i just want to let you know what our journey is but you want to make sure that whatever you have in your pantry that it's usable you have everything and you need to be able to use those items so what gap did i find well Y'all know we have, I like to make sure we have other ways of cooking when the power is out. And we have the butane, uh, Coleman butane stove. And I have cans of butane. But we also have sterno folding stoves. But I had no sterno. Embarrassment. So, I'm going to go out. I'm going to get some sterno. Uh, so, where am I at right now? Well, I'm supposed to be looking for sterno. But I decided to pull over and uh, go inside this military surplus store because the first time that Peggy and I were getting our prep together, I found a lot of items. There's a big overlap between camping, military surplus, and preparedness. 
in the military we call it readiness when I was in but uh so there's a nice overlap there so I'm gonna go inside there and see if I can trigger a couple ideas and stuff maybe share some of those ideas with you guys about some items that you may want to consider adding to your pantry um I'm Particularly, I'm looking for a P38. I'm hopefully they have some P38s in there, which is like a hand uh, can opener that uh, that the military was has been using for years. And some who knows some other items. I don't know some uh, chem lights or I don't know. We'll find out once we get in. So let's go on inside, fam, and I'm gonna share with you what I find, if anything. And then we're gonna go ahead and close those gaps out, and then I'm gonna uh, close the video out with a little final word with you guys. All right, fam, let's go do it. What's going on, fam? So uh, I come inside. We got Derek over here. He's helped me out immediately. I said, "Do you have batons? Do you have P38s? What you got, man?" I got this one right here. Here we go. There you go. So this is a good size because actually the one I had was smaller than this one. So that one is a P51. P51. That's why it's bigger. I got a box full. Of them. Got a box full of them, fam. Look at this, this tiny little thing can open your can goods when uh, the power's out. So, good to have. Hey, what's going on fam? So I am back home. Uh, that was a very productive day for me. Um, I got several items. Uh, first off, I wanna thank Derek over there at Camouflage uh, Military Surplus. He took his time, he showed me around and stuff, even though I wasn't really looking at everything. Um, I wanted to make this point while I'm at it that Everything you saw on the wall were non-lethal um, munitions or weapons. So I was able to get a P-51, which I never heard of, for only a couple bucks. Alright fam, so here's a quick 30 second demo of the P-51 or the P-38. They work the same way, just different sizes. Once you get a little puncture in there, it's all about just using the wrist action. I turned the uh, can around so you can see what I'm actually doing here. Um, I remember my dad taught me how to do this. and. Uh, it was much harder when I was younger, but it feels pretty easy now. All it takes is a little practice, and it's done. Um, I then left there to go to the Dollar Tree because they used to have Sterno. Uh, not not really the name brand Sterno, but canned fuel at the Dollar Tree. Um, the two Dollar Trees I went to did not have them. So I ended up going to Walmart and getting a two-pack for $6 of the name brand Sterno. And so that is now in the uh, pantry. And that brings my total today to $8. So had a little time out, spent $8, and got my family more prepared for any kind of emergency or situations. So that's a good thing. Before I go, I want to uh, uh, touch on a couple things that from the last video. First thing is uh, somebody gave me a great idea about how you can have coffee in a power situation. I was, I was uh, talking about how much power that coffee pots and microwaves use and how my little uh, solar generators might not be enough for that. And they about talking about instant coffee. Well, somebody put in the comments, what about French press? And I'm like, that's a fantastic idea. I'm, I'm embarrassed I didn't think about it because I had a French press at one time. I have no idea where it is. It's probably back in uh, St. Louis or something. But if you can heat up water, you can make some extremely good coffee. And um, you can get a French press for less than 20 bucks. Get your nice little teapot, set it on your butane stove, heat the water up, bam. Good coffee every single day. That will make your day on those really, really cold days and stuff. So that's a, that's a great idea. I want to thank uh, whoever left that comment. Um, also in the last video, I, I didn't get a chance to... Uh, power up my solar generator using the solar panels because it was just too cloudy and rainy. Well, I finally did get out. So as you can see, it was a very sunny day. So I was hopeful I should be able to get full power out of my solar panels. Now these are EBL 100 watt solar panels. Very easy to set up. 
just unfold it and prop the legs out. As you can see by the shadows, I'm trying to make a face toward the sun, get the best angle, and get the most power. No problem whatsoever. Brought the 1000 watt power supply over there, hooked in the little cord here, then hooked in the cord straight from the uh, solar panel. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Now, as you can see here, at this time, I'm getting about 70 watts in. And these are 100 watt panels. The most I got in was 78 watts. I don't know if there's a problem with it or whatever, but 78 was my max out of 100. Put the uh, power supply in the shade. Now, this is a Bissell Spot Clean Pro. It uses a max of 750 watts, watt hours. So, this is a, a, should be a good test for the draw on it. So, all I did was hit the uh, AC power supply, and here we go. So what I was trying to determine is whether I can charge up the panels at the same time and use the uh, power supply, which I was able to do. Um, no problem whatsoever, no stalls, no degradation. Now the final thing I want to talk about today is a comment that kind of struck me. It's not a negative comment per se. It was a uh, somebody shared what they saw on other channels that you don't need preppers pantries anymore. Now, that's interesting that people are saying that. Um, I don't know whether we forgot the lessons we've learned over the past few years or whether they've never been in an emergency situation. Or maybe they mean you don't need a six-month pantry or a two-year pantry. Maybe you just need a 30-day supply of food or something like that. I don't know what their, what their intent was. I, I saw, a, I, was, I went looking for it. I went looking for the uh, videos. And I saw a lot of videos that said that you don't need a prepper's pantry. And I clicked on them and it's saying they'll be sarcastic because you really do. So I don't I didn't I was unable to find the video that they were referencing. But it is easy to fall into that trap. Uh, if you've had a prepper pantry for like three years, and you've never used it or you've never had to use it. It might feel like you're wasting your time, but it's food that you're going to buy. You rotate it. So you, you, you have your food in your prepper's pantry, you use it and then replace it so it stays full. So you're still buying the food that you would have normally bought. I don't really, I don't see where the problem with it. It might take you an extra three minutes to walk from your pantry to your kitchen cabinets or something like that. Or maybe take a little time to inventory what you have, make sure you're circling through and stuff like that. But this is... As long as you're putting in your pantry the thing that you like and that you use on a regular basis, uh, I really can't see the downside of it. I don't know. Now, if you go, if you get carried away and you, if you got a basement with like 3,000 rolls of toilet paper and uh, I don't know, one half metric ton of canned goods. <laughs> Mate, but hey, I can't even call that carried away if you got a bunker. So if you have the space for it, hey, I, who am I? Who am I? So I really don't know what that, what the uh, full context, the, the full context of that was, but I would encourage you to at least set something aside. I don't, if you want to start with just a two week or 30 day supply, make sure you have something for emergencies. All right, fam. So that's it for today's video. I appreciate you watching. Appreciate you uh, following along on our pantry and preparedness journey. Uh, so from Peggy and myself, I just want to remind you guys to go out there and do something good for yourself and for others as well. Make sure you keep commenting. Take me in your arms Do just what you want You're the one to try